Hey, what's up guys? It's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today we're going to review the MSI B250M Micro ATX motherboard. Now this is for the Intel KB Lake series. Uh, it's the Socket 1151. It will work with the Skylake 6000 series CPUs as well. Um, so just to throw that in there. Now I actually bought this motherboard. It wasn't given to me as a review. So even though I try to remain honest, or I am honest and open with everything I do review, the fact that I bought this should give you some solace in that I have no one to please, I have no vendors to worry about, I'm just going to post this online and say it for exactly what it is. Um, so with that being said, let's talk about the basics. It is, like I said, a micro ATX motherboard. It comes with a three-year warranty. Right now it's selling for $90 in US dollars as of the first week of February, and that's on Newegg and Amazon.com, so pretty much the same price. Um, now there's two versions of this. I bought the cheaper one. This is the B250M, or B250M, whereas the more expensive one is the Z270M. Uh, um, now the 270 series is better for overclocking, so if you're planning on upgrading the RAM, um, you know, going with an overclockable CPU, etc., then that's something you want to look at instead. Everything else I cover will be the same among both boards but the Z270 series is better for your higher performance RAM, uh, CPUs, and even graphics cards if you want to just say you have the best chipset for that. So, the reason why I bought the B250 is I am not building a high-end gaming computer. I wanted really good features on the motherboard because motherboard quality is important, but I am using this in a home theater PC setup. So, with that being said, let's open this guy up and I'll show you why I selected this guy. Um, and, you know, before... There aren't a lot of close-ups of the boxes online. So here's the box. I'm going to turn this thing around. Let's go here. So that's what the box looks like. So, opening it up. Now I did open up this box already just to look at the manual so I can speak to this better. Um, we'll take out the, uh, let's I guess look at the accessories so we can focus on the board after that. So I'm going to remove this liner. Let's throw that on the floor. Here is your I.O. shield. Um, I like that it's black and red. It just looks clean. It doesn't look like this tacky thing. Pretty, um, the tabs that stick out to help seat against the motherboard stick out quite a bit. So just make sure that you line it up well when you put the motherboard in. You don't snag one of these and bend it. Um, that's always good 101 for motherboard building. Now it comes with two SATA cables. One is straight and one it has the 90 degree angle. So um, it's kind of nice. I mean they won't match perfectly but in different motherboard configurations or depending on your case I think that comes in handy so I would prefer to have uh, one of each if I only had two anyway. Thank you for choosing MSI. Please register and let's cover up the serial. Driver disc. I really I'm looking forward to the day where this is no longer in the box and you get a really cheap USB stick to have your drivers because not a lot of new computers have CDs anymore. So good news is you can download everything online. Here's a quick install guide. Um, I'm not really too worried about that. So let's put this back in here. Okay. Alright, so we're going to do this in two parts. The first part of this review is very basic. We're going to focus on what most people shop for when they look at motherboards. The second part of the review is going to get a lot more advanced. So if you don't care about all the super technical stuff, then feel free to turn it off. Um, I'm trying to separate it so I don't waste your time for viewing. Okay, so now that we have the motherboard unboxed, let's look at a few things here. Um, going with the back, let's start with the ports. You have the PS2 port, which is a low latency gaming optimized port. Um, you, which you can customize by the way. There's some software it comes with to help tune the devices connected to it. Two USB 2.0 ports, DVI, DisplayPort 2.0, HDMI 1.4. Now you need HDMI 2.0 to get 4K at 60 frames per second on the new Kaby Lake processors. That's the only way you can get it if you're using the integrated graphics card. I bought this to support 4K at 60 frames per second. However, to get a motherboard that has that built in, is almost double the price if not more and that's going with last year's chipset which means you need an older Skylake processor to flash your motherboard BIOS to support it the new Kaby Lakes because I don't want to go through that hassle and buy a second processor just to flash this one 
the display port allows you to do 40k or 4k at 60 frames per second if you get an active display port to HDMI 2.0 adapter they'll start at about 25 to 30 bucks for a decent one so that's a significantly cheaper option than going with a more expensive motherboard and you're still getting an excellent uh, component here so Intel Gigabit LAN now this is a gaming optimized LAN it's the uh, Intel i219 hyphen V it's a low latency network card so again really good performance there are three USB A um, 3.1 Gen 1 ports there is a USB type C port so you get the really fast IO from the latest USB specs and then of course your uh, sound card outputs now these are gold plated to help with um, you know interconnects and stuff like that that should help with gaming or audio performance I'm not using these because I'll be using HDMI or, or the display port to HDMI adapter um, that will bypass most of that so RAM you get four slots so you can do up to 64 gigs of RAM so there's no limitation on uh, what you can hit for this particular motherboard series I do want to point out so I said I'm going to be fair and, and honest this motherboard the thickness and stiffness of it is incredible this is one of the thickest motherboards I've ever used and uh, I'll just compare it to a very common one on the older Intel boards ASRock is pretty popular and I had the ASRock Extreme 4 if anyone has an ASRock motherboard or at least that series you'll um, agree that they are very flexible they have a pretty thin PCB this thing that was the first thing I noticed on this board is how stiff it is so the quality of the MSI is excellent however just because I'm not gonna say everything's great this is extremely flimsy so be very careful this is just a little plastic plate and you can always remove it but uh, when you're holding it try not to pinch this and assume you can lift up the motherboard especially if there's a CPU on it because you might break it these are secured very tightly however so going into the rest of the board um, again DDR4 um, you have six SATA ports on it let's flip that around the SATA 1 they don't say SATA 0 which is nice so SATA 1, 2, 3, 4 etc if you use an M SATA SSD and it's a SATA interface SSD then SATA 1 goes dead on the motherboard and you only have five if you have a PCIe based SSD which is NVMe then you can use all six SATA ports as well not sure how much you'll need them that many ports but just to let you know USB 3.0 header on the front here's your power fan headers and these are placed in an area to be very far away from the CPU cooler which I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate because you can still get in there and, and connect everything this will be the most difficult thing to access is the M SATA if you have a giant heat sink on there but micro ATX you don't have a lot of space to choose from so uh, one thing else I, I want to add if I can find the location of it it should be on the bottom they usually are but there is an LED output on this it's JLED1 is the jumper name let's see if I can find it is this fan so there's uh, there's more fans down here at the bottom JLED1 is right here so this little plug here the one that's kind of by itself um, without any plastic on the outside edges you can hook up a 50-50 RGB light to it I looked into the maximum length it is 2 meters which is 6.6 .6 feet in the US um, so the software that's built into this you can obviously turn the lights on and off on the board but it's only in red that RGB output will allow you to control other RGB lighting um, and it's the mystic lighting um, mystic light sync which you can also control with your cell phone so that's kinda cool uh, so if you're into RGB even though this board is only 90 bucks you still get that uh, the BIOS just to talk about the software so the pre-boot BIOS is a high-res BIOS it doesn't look old so if you're looking at making a lot of changes to it it doesn't feel dated it's it's a modern UEFI BIOS uh, which is really nice one cool feature I want to talk about is the uh, software called Dragon Eye so if you're doing game streaming or if you just want to play games and you want to overlay something else Dragon Eye lets you put a transparency selectable video on your screen so if you're playing a video game in the top right corner you can have someone else's twitch stream or YouTube video you uploaded or something like that playing simultaneously so that's kind of a cool app um, so we'll, we'll get more into the software after but let's just show a couple more things on the motherboard before we transition to the really technical stuff one thing I want to point out now see if I can capture it on the camera these screw holes right here for the motherboard standoff um, 
if you notice there's a few extra dots, that helps a ton with electrostatic discharge or ESD. That gives you a really solid ground connection to the chassis through those screws. Now, again, I'm not nitpicking on ASRock. They make great boards as well, certain models at least. But my ASRock Extreme 4 had only a few dots on each circle. It was built much more cheaply than this. And MSI does talk about that on their site as a, a focus point because they wanted to give you the highest quality um, electronic control. So if you look at electronic principles, everything on this board is designed to minimize um, electromagnetic interference or EMI. That's why you see the metal plating here, um, you know, to minimize noise. The sound card system, which I can try to find out, yeah, your audio system here um, is isolated. Um, they separate the audio components as well so there's less noise and hum. There's no pop when you plug in your headphones. You have gold caps to help uh, give you that nice warm sound. Not the gold color itself, but just that signifies the type of cap caps they use. Um, so that covers the basics. Again, supports Intel Skylake, KB Lake CPUs, designed for KB Lake, 64 gigs RAM max, USB 3.0 header, six SATA ports. You can do AMD Crossfire. However, if you're buying, planning on doing that, get the two, uh, Z270 series just for the other performance support. Um, so four PCI slots or PCI Express. Uh, covered the I.O. You have your power input here at the top, 8-pin, uh, which is good if you want to overclock as well. Uh, and that's about it. That covers the motherboard. So let's dive into the technical stuff. So tune off. If you don't care about this, we're going to focus on kind of boring things here. The fan outputs, I talked about how it has a CPU fan here, and you notice how far it is from the CPU. Again, the CPU fan being in the top right is kind of nice because it's going to allow you to put a giant heat sink on if you're doing air cooling, and then still be able to access the wire. I'm going to put this down and we'll see if we, uh, if zoom is better or, you know, we'll just move the hand around. So let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay. So the USB fans, uh, or sorry, the fan headers on them, the four pins, you can set them in two ways. There's PWM mode, which is pulse width, pulse width modulation, and that uses all four pins to tell the fan how fast to go. Now, some fans have that, some aftermarket fans don't. So if you bought a really high quality fan that's only a three pin, a lot of motherboards you're basically stuck at off or on, otherwise you have to buy an expensive fan controller. This particular motherboard has DC mode uh, with hysteresis, and I'll explain that in a minute, but DC mode basically allows you to use a three pin fan and the motherboard can change the voltage output to lower and increase the fan speeds on its own. So you don't have to buy a fan controller. And you can also set profiles so it basically performs exactly how you want based off several uh, temperature probes as well. Going into hysteresis, hysteresis is basically the way it controls the signal to the fan and how smooth it goes, which minimizes noise. So instead of spiking up and down frequently because of the fluctuation in temperatures or voltage and stuff like that, it's always smooth. So again, that's a great feature for a home theater PC if you're using case fans, is you can select a profile and it has a really smooth ramp up to that fan speed without uh, increasing the noise and ruining your you know, living room experience. This is Intel Optane Ready, which you're not really seeing on the market yet. That's going to come out later in the year as far as when it becomes more mainstream. But using that uh, MSATA port for Optane uh, memory caching is going to be nice. We'll see what the final specs look like as it becomes more production ready. Um, I already mentioned the steel armor plating. Um, that's the shielding on the PCI Express slot and the M2. That it's designed to help reduce electromagnetic interference. Um, SATA. If you're using an MSATA SSD, you're capped at, you know, the SATA interface, which is typically like 550, 560 megabits per second. That's what most people hit, or megabytes. Um, if you use NVMe, sky's the limit on the interface, but most NVMe uh, storage devices typically hit between 1.5 and, and 2 um, gigabits per second uh, as far as your bus speed goes. Now... I already mentioned the SATA ports. Um, there is a feature on this called One Click VR. The red USB ports are VR optimized, so you can take that for what you will. When I tried diving into what makes it VR optimized, it seems like it's more of a software enhancement than, than hardware. However, the 
um, the red USB ports on it have a really high quality signal when it comes to voltage. It's a little bit stronger than the norm and it's very stable. So if you're using it to power external devices and you're not going through a USB hub because you want the power and the low latency, then use those red USB 3.0 ports, or 3.1 ports, I should say. Audio boost, again, I talked about this briefly earlier. The gold caps are there for a, um, a warmer sound. Um, basically, they're Chemicon audio capacitors. Um, with the isolation, you're gonna get rid of humming static, or like that hiss, if you will, or at least greatly reduce it. Um, that kind of helps. You know, it's not perfect because it's still an analog signal, but basically they took a Realtek ALC 890, let's see, 892 uh, sound card or audio chip and they enhanced it with MSI specific features, which is nice because it keeps the cost down. They own the rights to how that works. Now, if you're using HDMI or DisplayPort 2.0, you're not gonna take any advantage of any of this analog audio processing that's happening or any of these ports. So take it for what you will. It, I guess it's good for a headset for occasional gaming. But again, home theater PC, I'm using the DisplayPort um, to HDMI to get the 60 frame 4K. So none of this matters. Um, now the audio processor again is EMI shielded, more EMI shielding there. I mentioned the NIC is the I219V uh, network interface card. So. MSI gives you software to enhance that Intel NIC um, and basically think of it as a host based quality of service if you don't know what quality of service is it's basically traffic shaping and prioritizing so if you're doing a game stream that requires 2000 kilobits per second upload speed and your bandwidth is only 2.5 it's not going to let um, you know a 1 megabit per second stream you know, if you're downloading something on a torrent or whatever, affect your game speed. You can prioritize your traffic so you have 2,000 kilobits per second guaranteed to your stream and everything else can fight for the rest, whether it be Skype, XSplit, um, Twitch, whatever it may be. So that's kind of a nice feature because it takes it off a router and if you don't have expensive network equ uh, networking equipment, it's a cheap way to support that. Um, the Memory overclocking, so here's what's kind of odd. When you go to the website and you look at the B250M uh, mortar series uh, website um, on MSI, it talks about overclocking RAM. Now this motherboard specifically states you cannot overclock RAM. So I don't know why the website says that, I just want to debunk it now, regardless of what it suggests online. The mother, the manual and this chipset does not support overclocking, so don't buy this board to overclock memory. Get the Z270 edition instead. Um, going into RAM, or sorry, the uh, troubleshooting. If we look at the board here, there is one little, I'm going to try to get it to focus. Um, let's see if I can get it just right. Okay. Easy debug LED down here at the bottom. These tiny ass LEDs right here are your easy debug, quote unquote. There are other manufacturers that do a better job with this. They're much larger and easier to see. They're more clearly labeled. I don't need a microscope to find out what each LED is. So I can try to zoom in even more. There we go. So those are the debug LEDs. Now if you have cables going here, it's gonna make it even harder to troubleshoot. So you may want to stick to on-screen troubleshooting or hook up the PC speaker if you want to go by beep codes. So, but that is where it's located. It's at the top. So plan your wire management accordingly. The motherboard has a thing called over voltage protection, which most high-end motherboards do. Um, the fact that it has it for under 100 bucks is nice. That's just going to make sure that your components last a longer time. Um, I have an MSATA card that was shorting out. And because of that, it fried two motherboards on two different laptops, which, you know, I can fix it. But if I had over voltage protection from that short, it would have kept my system intact and I could have replaced it. So even though it's kind of a small feature, it could come in handy if you ever bought a defective part. Uh, MSI does give you software for RAM disks. So if you want to utilize your RAM to increase performance, um, I only bought four gigs of RAM because it's a home theater PC. But if you want to throw in, you know, 32 and put your favorite applications on there, you can have that, um, once it's booted up, loaded in to give you better performance. Um, going through the motherboard page online in the manual, 
There are mentions of Steel Series certification, and I thought I saw it on the board somewhere. I'll have to double check um, because it was really odd. But there is, yeah, let's try to find it here. Steel Series is written right on the board. So it's certified by them for gaming. I did the research, and there's not really any hardware uh, requirements for Steel, Steel Series certification. But it basically means that if you're gaming for long, long periods of time, this board can remain extremely stable. So that's what Steel Series is supporting: is high performance and high reliability. Going through a LAN party and you have a micro ATX chassis, this is a really great motherboard to have for that because you can rely on it, and that's super important if you're competing. Going by the whole branding thing, it says uh, you know that it has steel armor and military class five and etc. And all that means is the quality of components they use is not garbage. They use higher quality capacitors. They use what's called titanium chokes or TI chokes. That's your power phase right up here, which as you can tell, there's six power phases. That is what gives power to the board and your DC power. Um, that helps regulate power. It gives you more power efficiency. The TI chokes, they say, are a 30% improvement in efficiency for more stability and overclocking. Again, kind of useless on a B250M chipset. But on the Z270M, that overclocking stability could give you, you know, 50 to 100 megahertz more than a cheaper board that poorly manages power. So for here, the B250M, that's just going to help me for reliability. When I put on a movie, I don't have to worry about as many issues, you know, the wife's happy, etc. Uh, it uses dark caps, lower equivalent series resistance, or ESR, which increases the lifespan. Dark caps are just high-end caps in... If you know what they do, um, they store charge, so as things get charged and discharged and used for stabilization of power, higher quality cap is important. Uh, they have another feature, I couldn't really understand how this does anything specific, but they also mention dark choke, which is the ability to run at lower temps. Not sure what they, there's no additional information on that. Um, these are the chokes, they are dark, but they also talk about them being TI chokes, so um, I could look more into it, but again, just a branding thing. Uh, so just to reiterate, um, it has a high-res BIOS. It has advanced mode and, and a standard or, or simple mode, if you will. There's really good hardware monitors. There's good overclocking. One cool feature on the software is a secure erase function for SSDs and SSD optimization. So if your SSD performance degrades over time, you can fix that by running the secure erase function which basically optimizes the placement of data on the drive and increases the lifespan it's not a t uh, typical it's not like a defrag if you will um, okay so I know some of this is kinda dry and boring again I warned you <laughs> if you made it to the end thanks for watching um, I'm sure there'll be some questions and if you're on reddit just post a reply to the comment on reddit because I will likely share this online uh, just to go around the board you have your audio, this is typical placements, audio, a fan, your LED, um, Combus, USB 1 and 2, which is for your USB 2.0 ports, sliding over, these are for your I.O., um, you know, your front ports for power reset, etc. Um, let's see what else we have here. Obviously SATA, USB 3, power, fans, fans, um, that, bas that basically covers everything. So it's a, it's a quality looking board. I'm gonna do a second review once I actually install everything to make sure it works as intended. Um, the only thing I noticed so far is that's really cheap. Everything else feels really good. There's no nothing out of the ordinary as far as creaks or sounds or flimsiness to it. So thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time when we dive more into the software side. Take care.